Welcome to Film Riot, not Mondays, but actually coming out on a Wednesday. We're going to get to questions, but before we do, I wanted to tell you guys about a contest that Film Supply is doing called the Film Supply Challenge. Musicbed and Film Supply together are doing this contest where you get access to both of their libraries for free. Film Supply is stock footage, and Musicbed is a ton of music, and the idea is that you make a 60-second edit using the assets from both of those, and then they're going to have a ton of winners and prizes. They got eight winners in total, like $50,000 worth of prizes. I was a part of it last year. I did an example edit of a fake trailer that you could find in the links in the notes below. You can find a lot more info uh, in the links below, but there's three categories to submit to, like trailer, ad, spec, or title sequence. It's got to be 60 seconds or less, but again, you can find all the details for that in the notes below. Definitely check it out. I love contests like this because it gives you a great way to get some new gear to up your game, but you can also have a great outlet to sort of practice and get people to see your work. So if you're interested, definitely jump on it. But now let's get to the first question. My question involves directing a film using an unpaid crew of inexperienced wannabe filmmakers. It seems like at least one of them, such as Boom Operator or PA, always tries to chime in with directorial suggestions. How do you balance showing appreciation for their help while keeping them from trying to play director? That can be tough to navigate, especially when everybody's doing it for free. I wouldn't use the term wannabe filmmakers as that's a pretty insulting way to pose it so I wouldn't ever say that to them or about them um, but I think it's just a conversation that you need to have with each person where there needs to be a captain of the ship and everybody has to have confidence in that person that they're going to be able to steer everything and have the vision to unify this project and in the end have something that everybody's going to be proud of so everybody has to understand that there's one main voice but they can also give uh, advice or opinions um, but quietly if they see something feel free to just pose it to the AD or even come to you and give a suggestion, but not loudly in front of the entire cast and crew. Sometimes when I want to watch short films, I always choose the ones that are around three minutes. Do you think the shorter the better? Also, do you think it's more challenging for the filmmaker to make an impact on the viewer in such a short amount of time? I definitely think it's harder to really connect with an audience in such a short amount of time, but there's a ton of short films that have absolutely done it, so it's totally doable. I think people do also have a short uh, attention span, so they do tend to click on things that are shorter, less of a time commitment from them. But for me, the shorter, the better is not a thing. I never even think of in those terms. I just write what it is that I want to make and that I make it. However long that that thing wants to be is how long it ends up being. Um, I try not to let it inflate too much, but that's for budget reasons. The longer it is, the longer it's going to take to actually shoot it, the more that's going to go into it, and the more money that's going to be needed to actually do it. So that's more of the thing that I'm keeping in mind when I write it. What resources do we have? And then I write smart for that, or as smart as I can. <laughs> not always all that smart, but as smart as I can without the actual runtime ever being really a thought process. Do you think young directors starting off shouldn't tackle heavy topics, depression, war, politics, pancakes, or waffles, etc.? because short films can't truly cover those complex topics in depth or because with age comes wisdom or is everything on the table. I think everything's on the table. I don't think you should ever shy away from anything that you're passionate about. If you have a perspective on something and you want to tell that in any form of story uh, and expression, I say go for it. And I don't think short films are too short to have an opinion on those things or get across an idea of those things or dive in and maybe pose a question with those sorts of topics. I don't think short films are too short at all. There's a ton of them that do exactly that and do it extremely well. I wouldn't discourage anyone from anything because you never know. The way that you see things isn't going to be the way that the next person sees it, and you don't want to discourage someone from something that could have been great. Here's the question. I saw you have a MIDI keyboard in front of your monitor. I've seen other professionals do this as well. Can you tell me your use of the keyboard and the software? I know you don't compose. Don't lie to me. I do actually compose. I do music, and that's why it's there. Uh, it's a MIDI controller that controls the MIDI for my software. I use Cubase and Contact 5 with a bunch of sound libraries. I actually have a music pack coming out really soon, and we're going to be releasing it before Black Friday. Uh, I think we're calling it blockbuster scores. They're just really loud 
uh, big songs. We put out three for free with uh, our one of our last sales uh, that people got when they bought a certain thing. But now this is going to be a full pack with several songs that I put together, uh, mostly shorter sort of trailery type stuff, but stuff that I wanted. So I thought I'd make it available for you guys as well. Other people also use mini keyboards for sound effects and all sorts of uses, but mostly I'm using it for music. Good day, Ryan. Any tips on how to deal with annoying perfectionist overacting actors? Because that's what I'm struggling with right now. It's such a shame that their acting skills fit the character they're assigned to, but their attitude is greatly unbearable. For me, like I've said a ton, I have a no a-hole rule. If somebody's impossible to work with, I just never work with them again. That's pretty much that. I've, I've spent years putting together the crew that I like to work with, just slowly but surely finding the people that I really click with and then continuing to work with them. The actors that I've worked with, I've loved all of them and now whenever I'm writing something I'm writing stuff specifically for them because I love working with them. I assume it's why uh, most directors end up working with similar actors over and over again is because they found a good rapport with them and they just want to keep that going. So again if somebody's impossible to work with I just never work with them again. You can take them aside. I have done that before and hash out what's going on. If they're acting out on set, is there a reason? Is, are they not getting something from me? Uh, but beyond that, it's just, you know, you kind of bear it through it and then you just don't work with them again. Hey Ryan, when directing a film and working with cinematographer, how much are you suggesting slash telling that person specifically what you want him, her to do, or do you mostly give that person a basic idea of what the scene is and then let them compose the shots, choose movements, etc.? Some directors do show up on set without knowing exactly how they're wanting to shoot the scene and they work very closely with their cinematographer and they do it that way, or some have the cinematographer mostly put it together themselves. I'm usually very, very specific about what I want everything to be doing specifically my camera. So I usually show up on set with a list of shots that I know for sure I want to get. And even if I don't have that list of shots, I have it in my head exactly what I'm wanting to do uh, down to camera height, speed of movement, everything. Uh, that is really a heavy part of directing is knowing exactly what you want your camera to do because that is your audience's eyes. However, I have that and I'm totally willing to throw that away at any moment the second my cinematographer has a better idea or any kind of input and they always translate that just a little bit differently. They're not going to sing the same note exactly how I sang it. I can show them the sheet music but they're going to play it slightly different than I would have which adds their voice into it as well and makes it more interesting but there's a lot of times specifically working with Ryan Booth on say something like Ghost House where I have a very uh, specific idea of one I'm wanting to pull off, but then Ryan shows up with a bunch of his own ideas and makes it even better. So it's a matter for me, it's a matter of just having uh, a plan in place and then being totally willing to break it to find something much, much better. I'm guessing that I'm not the only one to experience low points when it comes to creativity. What do you do to kickstart your creativity? I think I've talked about it before, but deadlines really help me a lot. I just commit to something that I have to have this done, say it publicly, you know, get committed to a sponsor or, or something else to where you can't back out to where you don't have any choice. You have to have this script written because you are shooting come this date. And that really forces you to be creative. I I think it's in there. I think the only roadblock really comes from you mentally. And if you can find something to force you out of that, then you're going to be just fine. Last question. Do you think that directors who can act are better at directing actors? Or would you say that they just have to understand the concepts of acting? I think just understand the concept of acting and know what it feels like to be in front of the camera. So I say it all the time. Directors should definitely take acting courses and should definitely be in front of the camera for something to know what it feels like to be in those shoes. That way you're much better at working with those actors but really you just need to know what you want. You just need to have a vision and uh, cast well, and you'll do great. If you're a budding filmmaker, entrepreneur, or innovator, domain.com is a place to go when that next idea hits you. When you get a domain name from domain.com, you're taking the first steps in creating a vision and identity for your brand or idea. Plus, .com and .net are the two most recognizable domain name extensions, which means those are the ones that are going to help you build your brand and expand your presence online the best. And domain.com is giving you 25% off when you use the coupon code FILMRIDE at domain.com's checkout. So when you think domain names, think domain.com. Logo. So that's it for today. And from what I'm watching, there is a documentary on Spielberg out there right now called Spielberg. It was an HBO film. Definitely hunt that down, find it, and watch it because it is absolutely amazing. And until next time, don't forget to write, shoot, edit, repeat. Mm -hmm.